Everyone hear me. Don't be afraid to come to the devil and let the devil know that you're not going to bow. Y'all hear me? What has happened? The devil is throwing so many things at you, trying to get you frustrated to stop your progress. Come on. You got to stay focused. Amen. Your worship is vital. Amen. In the midst of you going through, amen, God wants to come out of, uh, out of you in a way that you have never seen him before. Amen. But you got to trust God through the process. The enemy don't want you to uh, succeed. He don't want you to make it. Come on, he wants you to fail. He wants to bind you. He wants to bring you bond in bondage. But tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, whom the Lord has sent for me is free indeed. I was created to worship God. I was created to praise God. Amen. So, get this. You can't allow what you're going through to stop you. Amen. amen. If God allowed it, amen, he's giving you the grace to go through it. Yes. Hallelujah. So tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, find the grace. Find the grace. If you find the grace, amen, you're going to make it out. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, go ahead, my God. Then was never another full of fear, and the form of his dishes was changed. Against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hold on. Because you chose to stand for God, now the enemy really mad. Yes. Come on here. Everyone hear me what I'm going to say. If you're not being attacked in this season, you ain't with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God has allowed his people to go through. There's a mystery of suffering. Suffering calls us to purify our hearts and to see, get this, how need, how much we really need God and how empty the in, uh, in, in, uh we that we are without God, that we're nothing without Him. Glory to God. So God allows us to be pressed on every side. Come on here. Glory to God. To get what's in us, to come out. Hallelujah. Get this. People, get this. When people are calling for you, they're calling for your purpose. They're calling for your abilities. Can I help somebody in the house? Lord, why? Because God has put something in you that He didn't put in everybody else. Come on here. Everybody has an administration or operation or function. Come in that's uniquely designed by God. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I'm uniquely and fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. So get this. There's no carbon copy. Everyone hear me? So stop getting mad when people don't act like you. Come on here. Stop getting mad when people don't do what you want them to do. Come on here. Realize, get this. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a plan. Get this. And sometimes God has a re revealed to you the people that you have in your circle ain't really for you. Can I have somebody in the house? Everybody that said they got your back ain't really got your back. Because some of the very ones that said they got your back are the very ones that stand in the end of that. Tell you, you better watch your back. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead, go ahead, man. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it wants to be. Now, listen, this, this trial that you're going through is hotter than your normal trial that you've been going through. Come on. Tell you, listen, neighbor, I'm going through some unusual stuff at this unusual time. But tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God is just trying to deliver me. Oh, God, here in the house. God is just trying to purify my heart. God is just trying to keep me focused on here. Why? Because the enemy don't want me to come into who God has called me to be. But tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, but pray that he that is in me, that he that is in the world. And I got something on the inside. Take it to the world and give it in the world. Show pain. Take it away. Why? Because God made me who I am. And I have somebody in the house. And look at your neighbor, say, look at your neighbor. Right now, and the impact of by your head and keep on moving forward. To take your eyes off the 
for what you see. But the study of this nigga, what you see is not what it is. Can I get a witness? You gotta press on my faith. How many of you come up here? Sometimes in your body you feel sick. But you make your sick body get up and come here and move on. And do what the sick body don't want you to do. Can I get somebody? That's what they're not. Thank <laughs> you. 
Then he goes and says this. He says, and of God rested upon you. And on their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. See, some people, the reason why they're mad at God is because they don't know him. See, the enemy has twisted their interpretation of who God is. Y'all hear me? And the reason why many people get this, have had a, a, a think God is a bad person because they had a bad experience through a mother or father. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So because their father was abusive, they don't want to know God as a loving father. Glory to God. Why? Because they think that he's an abusive father, but God is a loving, compassionate, caring father. Glory to God. 15 verses. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody. Oh, God, help us right there. Tell your neighbor, mind your business. Mind your business. Some folk get this, not concerned about you, they just want to know your business. Glory to God. Everyone hear me. Watch who you're talking to. Glory to God. Because get this, there's a thin line between love and hate. Some of the people that, 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 that love you the most become the most hated enemies. Amen. Glory to God. Well, it says this. As, as busybody and other men's, men's matters. Verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Y'all hear me? So, get this. In order for you to, uh, to go before the judgment of God, get this, you got to be on trial. Y'all hear me? In the court of God, court of heaven. So get this. We can say what we're not doing, but if God said we're doing something, whatever God says is right. He knows the heart of every man. He knows the thoughts of every man. He knows the intent of every man. We say, I didn't mean nothing about it, but God said, yeah, you did. That's the only reason why you did it. You said that. Even, get this, even our thoughts, we're going to be judged by. God help us today. Goes on and says this. What shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit to the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Y'all hear me? Did y'all did y'all understand what he said here? He said, if the righteous should scarcely be saved, where the ungodly and the sinner, where are they going to hear? Man, that's, that's, that's a frightening thing. That means people in the church that were thinking that they were going to make it to heaven. Scarcely. That means it's a fine line. Not according to our, our interpretation, but according to his will, his word. There was, I'm going to give you the story for the close. There was these women that was having a Bible study on the book of Malachi. And they came to Malachi 3 and 3 where it says, that he sits as a refiner and purifier of silver. And they begin to ponder on it to wonder what was he actually saying. And so one of the ladies, she took it upon herself and said, hey, I'm going to go and get with this silversmith, and I will get back with y'all when I get back. We have the next Bible study meeting. So this woman plans a, a meeting with the silversmith, and she goes there, Amen. And watch them as he begin to work. He takes a piece of silver and he puts it in the midst of the fire. And he's holding it there. And she said, why do you have to do that? He said, you have to put it in the midst of the fire because that's the hottest part. Get this. And it brings out all the impurities. And so she just kept looking and kept wondering. And so she asked a question. She said, do you have to sit here and hold it and watch it? Amen. He said, yes, it is vital that I sit here and watch it. He said, because if you leave it in a moment too soon, the civil will be destroyed. 
Glory to God. And so then she asked the question. She said, well, how do you know when to take the silver out of the fire? And he begins to smile and laugh. He said, that's easy. He said, I sit and wait till I see my image. And when I see my image, I take it out. Let me have somebody here. A lot of us are going through trials of fire right now. And we wonder, God, how long and why are you allowing this? God is not allowing it to destroy you. He's allowing it to purify you. He's allowing it to get out all the impurities of self. Come on here. Because everything we've been doing thus far, we've been selfish. Can I get a minute and say, Lord, help me right here? I've been thinking about myself, what I want, come on here, and what I need to be doing, come on here, instead of your will, can I help somebody in the house? How many of us get this come to church Sunday after Sunday and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done, but we still find in ourselves doing what we want to do. Can I help somebody? We tell people off, can I help? We cuss people out, come on here. Lord, we don't even care about nobody but ourselves, because as long as my family takes care of I can care less about anybody else. But how, the Bible said, how well is the love of God in you when you see your brother or sister get this going through? Shut up your vows of compassion. Can I help somebody in the house? Tell you, say, neighbor, I realize in order for me to be blessed or my family be blessed, I gotta step out of my situation and be a blessing to someone else. Can I help somebody else? Do you know how uh, uh, many of us get this? Because when you help and are being a blessing to somebody else, you feel full and complete. Why? Because the joy of God, get this, is bubbling up on the inside of you. Because God has allowed you to be a blessing to someone less fortunate than you. Can I have somebody in the house? But get this, during this time and season, the enemy has us so many, get this, holding our hands back, get this, from helping our being a blessing to somebody else. Look at your neighbor, look at your brother, your sister, say, neighbor, if God move on my heart, when he move on my heart, I'm going to obey God from this day forward. Glory to God. Get this, because sometimes you pray for something, get this, that only can be unlocked through the giving of a seed. Can I have somebody in the house? Tell you say, neighbor, you wait on God to give you a house. Bless God with somebody else. Bless somebody else. Meet somebody else's need. Get this. And watch God meet your need. Understand this. He was saying that I was sitting here and watching. I must keep an eye on him. Everyone hear me. Don't you know that God has his eye on you right now? Come on here. Even though it seems like, God, I'm burning up. Everything is falling apart around me. God said, no, you're not. I still got my hand on you. And you're not ready yet. Can I hear somebody? Anybody ready? Come on. Say, Lord, how long? God said, just wait on the word while I'm on. Come on here. Just wait on him. The Bible says in, 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 in Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 31st verse, but tell you that wait upon the Lord shall renew. The shoot they shall mount upon the wings of eagles. They shall walk, come on here, run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Tell you, listen, neighbor, if you wait on him, he will come. Can I have somebody in the house? Matter of fact, I'm not waiting on him to come. I'm just waiting for him to show up. And matter of fact, he's already there. Just wait for him to pull me out. Can I get a witness? Anybody wait for God to post bill for you? Come on here. Everybody else said you ain't gonna make it come on here. But if God says we know your worst enemy, can I get somebody? The story about how you handle it, glory to God. The Bible says the burning hand dreads the fire. How many remember when you was a little kid? Mom and dad had the wood stove, so grandpa had the wood stove. And my dad said, get away from that. It's hot. And you didn't listen, and you went on up there. And sometimes when you touch it, you pull your hand back. And then from that point on, you was always careful about how you got around that hot stove. Tell your listen, neighbor, God is trying to make you on fire. 